Greetings, Tubadors! Back again, after yet another extended little absence. So much work, so little time for these little forays into the world of the uneducated <laughs> DK posse and the, uh, the general idiocy displayed by those who lack the most basic understanding of how the physical world works. So, where are we today? Ditra! D-I-T-R-H, or Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with this channel. He's actually got over 37,200 subscribers. That is a hell of a lot of stupid. And uh, considering that rabbits seldom burrow to a depth of more than about five feet, um, it's a fitting title uh, being, I think, indicative of how shallow their research actually is. But let's dive straight in, shall we? This particular video, upon which I am commenting today, is amongst the latest offerings from the DITRH camp. Uh, a video claiming that the Space Shuttle Endeavour's main rocket thruster is, or was, in fact, nothing more than a gas-filled blimp. Hmm, interesting. But before we come to that vest drenching revelation, let's have a look at one of the most often regurgitated Fleurfer tropes that they incessantly insist on curling out so that their echo chamber buddies will pat them on the head and congratulate them for a turd well laid. Because they sort of, uh, they hint at it in this video. It's, it's not a video specifically at this problem, a problem as they see it, it's freefall. Now, our friend from the Sandpit class asks this little poser, who falls fastest, a 250 pound man or a 58,000 pound thruster stage? Hmm, a quandary there for the uneducated. Well, let's see his contribution to the world of critical thinking. So, what free falls faster? An external fuel tank weighing 58,000 pounds or a 250 pound man? Well, let's have a look. First of all, the 250 pound man. This Felix Baumgartner leaping off the blue, the uh, Red Bull Stratos and whoosh, drop in like a stone. Bye-bye, Felix. Good night, Irene. Hang on, though. Taking into account the physics of acceleration, Baumgartner should have impacted the ground at a mere 1 minute and 28 seconds at a velocity of about 1,500 miles an hour, but only deployed his parachute after 4 minutes and 19 seconds. Now, this is another of the details that confuses the Fleurfers and the Firmament believers. Well, I am sorry to burst your little bubble of ignorance, but you have to take into account a little thing called atmospheric pressure, which means that the closer Baumgartner gets to the ground, the more rapid his deceleration becomes, which therefore proves that the atmospheric pressure of the Earth does indeed increase the closer you get to the planet due to the effects of gravity. But enough of that. Let's keep this simple for those who have difficulty in walking and chewing gum at the same time. Now, why in DITRH's video does Baumgartner drop like a rock and the thruster stage appear to float along at a leisurely pace? Well, first off, Baumgartner is less than 30 miles up, which means that the gravity is acting on him at about 98% the force that we experience on the ground. So as soon as he steps out of the Red Bull Stratos, and jumps off, whoosh! In a very short space of time, he's breaking the sound barrier. Now, that thruster we saw is about 330 miles above the surface of the Earth. That's about 305 miles further up, which means that gravity is still acting on it at about 89 or 90 percent, that which we experience on the surface, but it is also travelling along at a cool 17,500 miles per hour, which essentially puts it in orbit with the Space Shuttle. Now, our DITRH friend actually answered this in their following video, but we're obviously too damned thick to realise it. The video has offered up again, and so now we're seeing some more of that video of the external tank shot by Mike Fink after Endeavour's orbit. 
shot by Mike Fink after Endeavour's orbit. The shuttle was already in orbit when it released the thruster tank. It is designed to jettison 10 seconds after um, what they call MECO or main engine cutoff. Now, no doubt this gives it a little shove as it jettisons uh, before it eventually breaks up on re-entry and falls into the sea. So it goes to follow that the tank also stayed in orbit, albeit a decaying orbit, for a short while. Now, I'll... <laughs> I'll be coming back to this video in a few days and posting another short video regarding the uh, blimp retrieval vehicle that DITRH seems convinced uh, he, she or it has spotted in their second offering on the subject. So folks, there we go. I have finally managed to keep my promise of keeping these videos to under 20 minutes. <coughs> Hallelujah. So, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for joining me. And if you would like to see more like this, then please do press that subscribe button, give that bell notification a little tickle, and then YouTube will send you an email on my behalf the next time I upload one of these videos. So, until next time, thank you again for watching, be nice to each other, and until then, Heul Vaur.